All right, there are a couple of ways we can load multiple images into Photoshop layers in a single command. I'm going to show you both of those methods really quick. Now, if you use Bridge, you can go to the File, Browse, and Bridge here in Photoshop, and I can select a folder that has multiple images. So I'm going to select all five of these images here in my stock folder. And under the Tools menu, down under Photoshop, Load Files into Photoshop Layers. I can select that command and Photoshop's going to automatically take all of these layers, merge them, or not layers, all of these images and merge them down into a single document. And you can see now I have each of those images here inside of my Photoshop document as layers. Another way to do the same thing without utilizing Bridge is just in Photoshop, go to the file, and then it's down under the scripts command here. You're going to, going to apply these scripts, load files into stack. If you choose that command, you can also browse multiple images here, select them all, and then go ahead and uh, import these and it will create layers as well. You can also automatically align these from this command as well. Now, oftentimes when you're working with photographic imagery like I am in these tutorials here, you want to make sure that you don't destroy the pixels in the photograph. In other words, we want to work in a non-destructive workflow. And in order to do that, that often means working with layer masks and working with smart objects inside of Photoshop. So we're going to look at how we can take advantage of Photoshop smart objects next. Now I'm going to open one of those sample images again. So here I'll say File Open. And I'm going to pick here this model here and I'll just open this up. And inside of Photoshop, I want to convert this layer to a smart object, which is what's known as an embedded smart object. Photoshop has two types, a linked smart object and an embedded smart object. An embedded smart object basically means that that object is actually inside of your Photoshop document as a layer here, and it will make your Photoshop file size increase. If you create a linked smart object, the image stays on your hard drive or your flash drive or wherever it's stored, and Photoshop just remembers where it's at. And if you, would, if you happen to move it off of your flash drive, you're going to break that link. So this is how we create a, an embedded one. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of the background layer by double clicking and hitting OK. And you can simply right click any layer inside of Photoshop and say convert smart object. And the only really tip off you have here is the little teeny tiny icon right here. It got this little square and that's telling me that this is now a smart object layer inside of Photoshop. Now a smart object layer has many benefits. One of them being you can resize this layer as many times as you want. So I'm going to just hit command T to transform here. And I'm going to scale this image way down teeny tiny and hit OK. So I've applied that transformation. That's a destructive command. But because we're working with a smart object, it's actually a non-destructive command. So if I rescale this back up, Command T, I'm just going to scale this way back up. And you'll notice that the image still looks super crisp. Now I'm going to destroy this smart object. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to say rasterize layer, which is essentially going to break the smart object. And now I'm back to a pixel layer. Now watch what happens this time when I resize. So I'm going to resize here and I'll scale this picture way down. Same thing to the bottom left hand corner and I'll hit OK. That's a destructive command and I'm going to scale this back up and you can see right away what's happening, right? It's completely pixelated. There's no way to get that back. I'll apply that command and it'll try to anti-alias it. But every single time I apply a transformation command in Photoshop, if it's not a smart object, and I'm working with a raster based layer or a pixel layer, it's going to be a destructive command and it's just going to keep getting worse and worse and worse with every new transformation. So that's one of the benefits of using smart objects. I'm going to undo several steps here so I can get this back to just, in fact, I'm just going to say file revert here to get this back to the default document. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to import another image as an embedded smart object. In order to do that, you say file and you say open as smart object. Okay, so I'm gonna select that command and I'll just pick any one of these layers here, it really doesn't matter, and hit okay. And you can see that that now opened this image and instead of the default JPEG, notice this layer right here is not a smart object, but this image now is set up in smart object form because I have that little um, icon on the layer thumbnail there. So that's a quick easy way to open your images as smart objects from the get-go so you don't have to remember to convert them when you open up a regular JPEG layer. If you're working with other Adobe software such as Illustrator, you can actually paste objects from Illustrator directly into Photoshop 
as smart objects so that they retain their original vector form. Now I've got Illustrator open here and I've just got this simple um, rose here out of the default flower pack and the symbols and you can see that it is a complex vector art um, illustration here. Now I'm just going to highlight this entire area here and just say command C to copy. And so I'm going to edit and copy this and then I will jump over to Photoshop now and I'm going to say edit paste. And you'll notice that when I say paste this little thing pops up and it says hey how do you want me to paste this object? As a pixel layer, a path, a shape, or what I want to do is smart object. So I'm going to hit OK here on smart object and hit OK. And now you'll see that this is going to come in as a smart object. I'm going to scale this up a little bit so you can see that it's going to preserve the transparent or the uh, um, resolution there. And hit OK. And sure enough, that layer is in fact a smart object layer. And because it's a smart object, I can scale this thing up and down and up and down. And it's going to look nice and crisp each time because the original smart object is an actual vector shape from Illustrator. All right, last in this video, I'm going to show you how you can edit a smart object. So I've got two separate smart objects here. Actually, I only have one. I've got this flower. Notice that the other layer I reverted back to the original. So I'm going to right click the original layer and also convert that to a smart object. So now I have two layers. Both of these layers are smart objects. I'm going to, whoops, I'm going to scale down that flower so it doesn't take up so much room here and hit OK. Now in order to edit a smart object, you can simply just double click the layer icon over here. So if you if you find the thumbnail, double click it and this will take you into smart object edit mode. And it tells you the little warning here. It says after you edit the contents, you must save in order to commit them back to the original document. So we hit OK here and this opens up the smart object you'll notice back in the original program. So this actually took me back to Illustrator, opened up that vector smart object and now I can make any changes I want. So let's say I want to come in here to this. This is a sample here. I'll get, um, I'll come into this grouping here. Hit OK. We'll zoom in here nice and, whoops, nice and tight here. I'm just going to make a color change on one of these little swatches here. So I'll come and I'll change this one to a bright blue so we can definitely see this change happen. So I've changed that. I'm going to come back to that object, zoom back out, and I'm going to save. So I'm going to say Command S. Now as soon as I save, when I jump back to Photoshop, you'll notice that that automatically updated my smart object with that change. Now if I come to this layer and double click, this layer was originally a Photoshop layer. So when I double click this, it's going to open up in a file called PSB. These are kind of nicknamed Photoshop bigs. Um, but a PSB file is what a smart object is stored inside of. And I'm just going to make a change here, just a really drastic change so you can see this. I'm just going to get my brush tool. I'm just going to paint here and then save. So as soon as I save, I can jump back here to my original and notice that smart object gets that modification. If I come over here and I'll choose a new color here uh, and I'll do a little bit more painting here. So I'm going to paint, 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 jump back over here and notice that change does not reappear until you save the PSB file and then sure enough that updates over here inside of your Photoshop document. So that's how you can edit an existing smart object.